Hey everybody, I'm Matthew Laria, and you're watching the Faith for Life broadcast. Let's pray and release faith over today's broadcast, and then we'll get right into the Word. Father, we do thank you again today, Lord, for your Word. And Lord, we ask you today for revelation of your Word. We ask you today for grace and help to receive your Word, to put it into practice, and to see it work in our lives. And Lord, I release my faith today over everybody watching the broadcast. And I thank you, Lord, for ministering to them today through this broadcast in a great and in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, on today's broadcast, we're going to start a new series that we're calling How to Experience Victory Over Your Adversary. And I want to go over to 1 Peter 5 and look there at verse 8. This will be our foundation text in this series. 1 Peter 5 and verse 8 says there, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. And so right there from that verse, we can see that we do have an adversary and he does want to devour us. Now, Jesus has done everything that needs to be done for you and I to experience victory over the devil in this life. But that reality doesn't change the fact that the devil is still in the earth and he still wants to steal, kill, and destroy and devour you and me and everything in our lives. We have an adversary who wants to devour us. Now, the good news is that we can learn how to operate in faith and in line with the Word of God and keep him from devouring us. In fact, in that verse, it says that he's seeking whom he may devour. And so apparently there are some people on the earth that he may not devour, that he can't steal from, that he can't kill, that he can't destroy. And friend, if you and I will learn how to experience victory over our adversary, then we can keep him from devouring us, praise the Lord. And so that's what we're going to be talking about on the broadcast next five episodes. We're going to be talking about how do we experience victory over our adversary? Because every Christian that's walking the earth is not experiencing victory in this life over the devil. Only uh, some are, only a select few are going to experience victory over the devil and the ones who do experience victory over the devil are going to be the ones who do what God told us to do with the devil and when he attacks us in our lives. Now, I want to go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're going to look here, starting in verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, in verse 7. And uh, this is the account of the Apostle Paul with the thorn in his flesh. And I wanted to read these verses here. In verse 7, it says this, the Apostle Paul wrote by the Spirit, Lest I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Verse 8, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice or three times that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness, Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Now, in these verses, the Apostle Paul is encountering an attack from the enemy. 
Now, this should be no shock to us because the Apostle Paul had just got what he called abundance of revelations. It says that there in verse 7. And so the Lord had been revealing things to the Apostle Paul, giving him revelation knowledge. Now, we know from the fourth chapter of the book of Mark in the 15th verse that Satan comes immediately to take away the word that is sown in our hearts. And so when we are receiving the word, when we're receiving revelation of the word, Jesus told us that the enemy is going to come immediately to take that word away. And that's what's happening right here to the Apostle Paul. He had been receiving an abundance of revelation from God. And so here comes the enemy with an attack to try to steal what the Lord had given him. Now, this thorn in the flesh, <laughs> praise God, has been the center of much conjecture, much discourse, uh, people uh, ask the question, what was this thorn? And then they give their opinion about what they think this thorn is. And friend, all you and I have to do is just read this scripture right here and it will tell us exactly what the thorn was. And it tells us exactly what the thorn was designed to do. Let's read it here in verse 7 again. Lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Now listen, the messenger of Satan. And so that's what the thorn was. It was a messenger of Satan. The thorn was the devil. The thorn was an attack of the devil. It was the adversary at work. Somebody said, what was the thorn? You don't need to uh, pontificate or opine or give your thoughts about what the thorn was. The word's telling you what the thorn was right here. It was the messenger of Satan. It was the devil. It was the adversary. It was an attack of the devil. It was an attack of the adversary. And what you're going to find is it doesn't matter um, however the devil attacks you, whatever kind of attack it is, that doesn't matter because you and I respond to his attacks the same way no matter what kind of attack it is. And so again, the thorn in the flesh, Scripture says, it was the messenger of Satan. It was the devil. It was the adversary. What was the purpose of that thorn? Verse went on to say, to buffet me, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. What was the purpose of that thorn? It was to buffet him. The word buffet there means to strike with a fist, to treat with violence. Uh, you could say to harm. What was the purpose of that thorn in the flesh. It was to harm him. It was to hurt him, to strike with the fist. It was to bring violence and harm and destruction in his life. And also, it was there to keep him from being exalted, exalted above measure, the scripture says. The thorn in the flesh was the messenger of Satan, and its purpose was to harm him and to keep him from being exalted and lifted up. Now, uh, this verse has been misinterpreted uh, a lot of different ways for a lot of years. Friend, God wants you and I to be exalted. Let me read you some verses. 1 Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. James 4.10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. The psalmist said in Psalm 18.33, that God sets me upon high places. 
Deuteronomy 28, uh, in that chapter, it talked about how God will set us uh, on high above all nations. And so God is not against his people being exalted. Far from it. In fact, the will of God for his people is to be exalted and even exalted above measure. If you look up that phrase, exalted above measure in the Greek, you run into this idea to be supremely exalted, to be increased, to be lifted up to great prestige. Well, see, friend, it's the Lord's will that you and I be increased. It's the Lord's will that you and I be lifted up to great prestige. In the Psalms, uh, it talked about how the Lord will lift us out of the dung heap and set us with princes. Psalm 115 talked about how He wants to increase us more and more. In Isaiah 58, I believe it is, it talked about how if we will honor the Lord, He will cause us to ride upon the high places of the earth. See, God wants us to be exalted. He wants us to be lifted up. He wants us to be increased and to be brought to a, great, a place of great prestige. This is what God wants for us. Now, the devil doesn't want this for us. He wants to bring us low. He wants to bring us down. People have read these verses in 2 Corinthians 12 for years, and they thought the Apostle Paul was in pride because of the uh, revelations that God has given him. And so God sent the devil, <laughs> sounds silly when you say it, sends the devil to get the Apostle Paul out of pride. Friend, that, you're confused if that's what you think is going on here. No, we have to interpret verses through other verses. And if you understand the fourth chapter of the book of Mark, you know that when the word comes, the enemy comes immediately to take away the word that was sown. And so that's what's going on here. And if you interpret this verse through other verses, you know that God wants, us to, wants to exalt us and lift us up and bring us to a high place and increase us. And the enemy doesn't want that to happen. And that's what's going on here. And that's what this thorn in the flesh was about. It was the devil, it was the adversary, and it was there to bring Paul low and to bring him down and to see to it that he wasn't increased and lifted up. Praise the Lord. Now, um, I want you to notice what the Apostle Paul did when he was attacked by the devil. It says in verse 8, For this thing I besought the Lord three times that it might depart from me. I besought the Lord. The word besought there means I prayed, I begged, I asked, I called upon the Lord, and I did it three times that it might depart from me. And so when he was under attack by the enemy, Paul addressed the Father in prayer. Now I want you to notice that what he did did not work. It did not get rid of the devil. It did not get rid of this so-called thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan. It didn't get rid of it. What did he do when he was under attack? He asked God to do something about the devil who was attacking him. Asked God to do something about this attack. Petitioned the Father in prayer, and he got no results. It did not work. He, he, he says it in there in that scripture. I, I'm asking the Lord three times. Didn't work the first time. Didn't work the second time. Didn't work the third time. What he did when the devil attacked him did not work. Now, what are you and I supposed to do with the devil? Well, we need to interpret these verses through other verses. James 4, 7 says that you and I are supposed to submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And then 1 Peter 5, 8, our foundation text, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9, whom resist steadfast in the faith. So here we got another verse saying, what are we supposed to do with the devil? We're supposed to resist him. Now Ephesians 6, 10 brings it out even more. It says, be strong in the Lord. 
and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Stand against is the same idea uh, as resist. Verse 13, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Now that word withstand in verse 13 is the same Greek word as resist in James 4, 7. And so you can see what's the Lord telling us to do? Resist in the evil day. What are you and I supposed to do when the devil attacks us? We are supposed to resist him. We are supposed to stand against his attack. We are supposed to push back against him and not yield to it and take our stand against what he's trying to do in our lives. Now, um, Paul, praise God, he got corrected for what he was doing. Notice what he said. He said, I besought the Lord three times that this might depart from me. And God said, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. Well, friend, that, that's a correction. God didn't answer his prayer. <laughs> huh? He didn't answer his prayer. He's correcting Paul. And he's saying, my grace is sufficient for you. Well, what is grace for? Grace and strength are for doing. You need grace to do something. You need strength to do something. Well, what did God tell us to do with the devil? He told Paul, he told us to resist the devil, to stand against his attacks, to put on the armor. And so when God's saying, my grace and my strength uh, is made perfect in your weakness, grace and strength are there to empower you to do what God told you to do. And God told us to resist the devil. God was telling Paul, my grace and my strength are more than enough for you to stand against these attacks and resist the devil and see him flee from you. A lot of people translate the, or interpret those verses to kind of mean, you know, well, Paul, I know you're struggling and I'm going to give you some grace and strength to just put up with the devil and to just hold on tight in this struggle. Well, there's no verses that God told us to put up with the devil. No verses where God told us to just hold on tight when the devil is attacking you and just put up with it and just, you know, hold on tight. And That's not what God told us to do with the devil. That's not what he's giving you grace to do. God doesn't give you grace to struggle. Praise God. He gives you grace to overcome. He gives you grace to walk in victory. He gives you grace to resist the devil and see him flee from you. And so when he said, my grace is sufficient for you, that wasn't just kind of like a pat on the head. Well, just struggle with it a little bit longer. It'll be over soon. No, no, no. That was my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. And so use my grace and use my strength and do what you're supposed to do with the devil, which is resist him. Praise God. Now, when Paul was beseeching the Lord three times about this messenger of Satan, that's not resisting the devil. That's addressing the father it with petition. That's not the same thing as addressing the devil and resisting him. These are two different things. What he is doing in, this, in these verses, and let's not cast any stones. You and I have made mistakes as well. What he's doing in these verses, this is not resisting the devil. Now, God said, if we resist the devil, he will flee from us. We know Paul's not resisting the devil because the devil wasn't going anywhere. Now, he, he picked up on it, on what the Lord showed him, and he said, therefore, I'll take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches, necessities, these kinds of things, for when I am weak, then I am strong. He saw it, what the Lord showed him, and then he started resisting. But before, before verse 10, he wasn't resisting the devil, and that's why the devil wasn't going anywhere. Now, we don't have a lot of time left on the broadcast, but you need, you need to see this. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 4 quickly. 
Now, in Matthew chapter 4, uh, in verse 3, it says there, When the tempter came to him, came to Jesus, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Now, Jesus is under attack, just like Paul was. Might have been a different kind of attack, but friend, the kind of attack doesn't change what you and I are supposed to do with the devil. No matter what the attack is, we're supposed to resist him. We're supposed to stand against the attack. Now, Jesus is under attack, and he's being attacked. And look what he did in verse 4. He, it says, in verse 4, but he, Jesus, answered and said, It's written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Verse 5, then the devil took him up to a holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said, If you be the Son of God, cast yourself down, for it's written, He's given His angels charge over charge concerning you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest at any time you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It's written, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Verse 8, Again the devil took him up to, ex to an exceeding high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and said unto him, All these things will I give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, or get away from me, uh, Satan, for it's written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Now listen to verse 11. Then the devil leaveth him. Now what are we seeing here? Jesus... What he did actually got rid of the devil. What Paul was doing did not work. It didn't get rid of the devil. What Jesus did worked, and it was effective with this attack. What Paul did did not work. It didn't get rid of the devil. Now you notice Paul said, I asked the Lord three times. Didn't work. Jesus responded to the devil three times and resisted him, and it did work. Now, I want you to see that when Jesus was being attacked by the devil, Jesus addressed the enemy with the Word. He didn't address the Father in prayer. Now, friend, you need to hear this. I hear people going, well, that was Jesus. We're not Jesus. Jesus was operating as a man in the earth, anointed by God. He's not operating as God. He's operating as, our man, as, as a man, and He was our example. And if we abide in Him, we're supposed to walk even as He walked. We're supposed to conduct our lives the way He conducted His life. What He is doing right here is how we are supposed to respond when the devil attacks us. It's how the Apostle Paul... Uh, should have responded in that instance, and then afterward he did respond like that. But we're supposed to respond uh, to the devil the same way our master responded to the devil. And a lot of people, whenever they get under attack, what are we talking about in the series? How to have victory over our adversary. You don't get victory over your adversary when you're under attack by just praying and asking God to do something about the devil. Praise God. That does not work. You have to do, if you want to get the results that Jesus got in Matthew chapter 4, then you have to operate and function like Jesus did. And when he was under attack, he, told the de he addressed the devil with the word. He said, it is written. And that's how you get rid of the devil. Not by begging God to do something. And sadly, there, there, I'm just going to throw something out, a statement out here. The majority of the church is operating the way Paul operated in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 before he was corrected. And, and a large majority of the, per, of the church ignores how Jesus operated when he was under attack by the devil. The more, majority of the church is not acting like Jesus acts in Matthew chapter 4, they're acting like Paul acted in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And that's why so many believers are not enjoying victory over their adversary. They're not seeing the devil flee from him, from them because they are not resisting him with the word of God the way the master did. And friend, if you don't do it like Jesus did, 
you won't get victory over the devil the way that he got it. And so what he did was considerably different than what Paul did. Paul, when he was under attack, he addressed the Father with petition. Lord, do something. Lord, do something. Jesus didn't address the Father at all. He stood in the authority that he had over the devil, and he stood on the authority of the Word of God, and he ran the devil off. And friend, if you're going to experience victory over your adversary, you're going to do it the same way. You're going to have to find out what this Word says. You're going to have to put it in your mouth. We'll talk more about this in the coming weeks. And you're going to have to start addressing the devil when you're under attack and start telling him, no, you don't, not in my life. You start addressing the sickness, the disease, the depression, and you start saying, no, you don't. It is written by his stripes. I am healed. It is written. I have Jesus's peace. It passes all understanding. It is written. This is how you experience victory over the adversary. Friend, we, we love the Apostle Paul. He's one of the greatest men that ever uh, walked the planet, lived the planet, used mightily. We honor him. We follow his teachings. Um, but uh, when it comes to, th to these two examples, we have to do what Jesus did, not what Paul did before he got corrected. And later on, we'll see that the Apostle Paul got it because later on in Ephesians, when he wrote to the, uh, the church at Ephesus, he told them, don't give any place to the devil. And so it became revelation to him. When I'm under attack by the devil, it's not time to pray to God. It's time to resist him steadfast in the faith. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we do thank you today that we can enjoy victory over our adversary. And so, Lord, we're asking you, help us uh, to operate the way Jesus operated when he was under attack so that we can experience the victory over the adversary that you want us to. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, thank you so much for watching today's broadcast. Now, I'm telling you right now, you are not going to want to miss any of the teachings in this series. These things are going to equip you to enjoy victory in your life like you never have before. So hey, don't forget to come back next time for the next episode of the Faith for Life broadcast. It's gonna be good. You don't wanna miss it. We'll see you then. Hey, we got a free offer going on right now at the ministry. I'd like to send you a free copy of my book, Victory in Troubled Times. In this book, I give you five keys from the Word of God that will help you overcome any challenge that you face in life. Friend, this is a powerful book. It's a powerful tool, and I want to get it into your hands. And so if you'll just email the ministry, info at mam.tv, give us your name and mailing address. We will ship this book out to you at no charge. And right now, we're going to throw in a copy of our mini book, Faith Declarations. In this book, you will find declarations of faith for almost any area of your life. These things are so powerful to speak over your life daily, and this will also be a tremendous blessing to you. And so, hey, I wanna get both of these into your hands at no charge. All you gotta do is email the ministry, info at mam.tv, give us your name and mailing address, and we will send them out to you, and they will be a blessing in your life. Praise the Lord.